everyone, welcome back to the Physics Angels channel. Today we're going to be doing a Physics 7 one dimensional wave practice problem. Remember to like and subscribe if this video helps and your feedback is always appreciated. Here's the problem. Feel free to pause it and copy it down if you want to follow along. The problem today is a one dimensional wave is observed to have the following y of x and y of t plots. The y of t plot is at position x equals 2 meters, and the y of x plot is at time t equals 4 seconds. On the next page, when we do the problem, I will have larger graphs for you to view. Here are the questions we want to answer. What is the velocity of this one-dimensional wave? What direction is the one-dimensional wave traveling in? And what is the phase constant phi naught for this one-dimensional wave? So here I have both graphs written down. For this graph, which is a function of time, we are looking at the wave at a specific point at x equals 2 meters as given in the problem. For this graph, which is a function of position, we are given that we are looking at this graph at the specific time, 4 seconds. We can look at these two graphs and find similarities and figure out how this wave is behaving. So our first question is, what is the velocity of this one-dimensional wave? We're given the equation velocity equals the wavelength over the period, which makes sense because velocity is measured in meters per second, wavelength is measured in meters, and period is measured in seconds. So using these two units, we still get units of meters per second. So our unit analysis checks out. So for this part, we want to find out what our wavelength is and what our period is. To find out the wavelength, we want to look at the position graph, because the wavelength is the distance between two points that are the same on a graph. So we, if we look at this point here at x equals 2 meters, we want to find another point on the graph that is trending downward after it crosses the intersection for the second time. So if we look at this point here, these two points are just starting the wave to replicate again. So the wave from here goes down, up, and then back down. And if we follow this, it'll go down, back up, back down. So if we count the distance between these two points, one, two, three, the distance of this wavelength is three meters. So lambda, the wavelength, is three meters. We do a similar process for the period. We look at this time graph, that y is a function of time, and we pick a point like we did before. Let's pick the point time equals 2 seconds. If we follow this along again to another similar point, we see that we have to go up and then down and then back up. And starting from here, we will go back up and down and up again. So this is the end of the one wavelength. And this is the, also the end of one period on this graph. So if we count how far along, how many seconds this is, we can see that it's one, two, three, four seconds. So our period is four seconds long. Dividing these two, we get a velocity of three over four meters per second. And that is the first part of the problem we wanted to answer. The next part of the problem we want to answer is what direction is this one-dimensional wave traveling? This is a bit trickier, and I find that uh, whether you're a student or a TA, that this can really trip you up if you don't have a good way of understanding this. So an example I'm going to use is imagining a rubber ducky. For a rubber ducky, it can float up and down in the wave, or it can move along the wave. So what we want to imagine is a rubber ducky sitting in a pool or some other place where we have waves. <laughs> imagine jumping in a pool and making the rubber ducky go up and down on the wave. If we look at this graph, which is the y as a function of time, we can see that we're looking at a specific point along the wave. So we can imagine the rubber ducky moving up and down in this wave as a function of time. So if we look at this wave 
and we look along the whole wave, at two meters along the wave, the wave is traveling through here and going up and down. And this rubber ducky is riding along with it as time goes on. So this is the function, this is the graph that's of time. For the graph that's of x, we have the rubber ducky at a specific time. So at time equals four seconds, we are imagining the rubber ducky sitting here and we need to know which direction it's gonna go. This is not the best duck in the world. But we need to imagine which direction is it gonna go. So this is the wave sitting still. So the wave is sitting still at some point, which they give us t equals four seconds. And what we wanna do is we wanna match up this point for the y of x graph to the point on the y of t graph. So how do we do that? If we look back at the y of t graph, we have the rubber ducky, Let's pick a specific point on this graph. So if we look at time equals four seconds, which is a good point to look at because that's exactly what this graph is telling us. It's time at four seconds. So time equals four seconds. As time moves along, our rubber ducky is gonna fall down because this wave is gonna shift left. So as time moves on, our wave is gonna shift even more so that as we look at this, the rubber ducky went from here to here, okay? So what we wanna do is imagine as time moves on or as time goes backwards, does, should the rubber ducky go up or down? So here we're saying as time moves on to five seconds, the rubber ducky should go down. And as time goes back to three seconds, the rubber ducky should go up. So let's look at this graph, the y of x graph. If we want to position our rubber ducky, once again, at x equals two meters, it makes sense that it's intersecting at this point, x equals two meters, because we saw over here when t equals four seconds and x equals two meters, it intersects the graph. These are the same points. So if we imagine shifting this graph so that time moves on, let's say we wanna move the t equals five seconds. Do we wanna shift this graph left or right for the rubber ducky to match the position over here vertically? If we shift this graph left, this point is gonna move over here and so the rubber ducky will go up. If we shift, I'm sorry, if we shift the graph right, I misspoke, this is right. If we shift the graph left, the rubber ducky will go down because this point moves this way. So as time goes on, do we wanna shift this graph left or right on the position graph? Well, for the rubber ducky to go down, we need the graph to shift left. So the wave travels left, given this position. Once again, this is because the rubber ducky or whatever you're observing, the point on the wave or a boat or a buoy is sitting at this specific point. This is at x equals two for time equals four. If we keep observing that point, x equals two, time equals four, we want the rubber ducky, if it stays at that point, what will happen if the wave travels left on the time graph? That is to say, as time moves forward, what happens to the rubber ducky? The rubber ducky must go down. Here, as time moves forward, so at t equals four seconds, as position moves forward, um, we also want the duck to go down, and that's what we see it does. So the wave travels left. That is the solution for part two, which is the direction of the wave travel. For the last part of the problem, we want to find the phase constant for this wave, and we can get the wave equation for this specific wave. So looking at our generic wave equation, we have our function of y, which is a function of x and t. We have our function y, which is a function of x and t. The amplitude, which is the height of the wave, times sine, and then inside the sine we have two pi, 
times our specific time divided by the period plus or minus 2 pi times a specific point we pick divided by lambda, which is our wavelength, minus phi naught, which is our phase constant. So this is what we want to try to find. So first what we want to do is we want to pick position and time in which the easiest way to do that is for our y to equal zero. So if we look at our graph here, we can look at, at x equals two, at time equals two or four or six, our y graph is zero. So I'm gonna pick the point two, two, just for simplicity. So this is the point we're choosing. The position is two and time is two. Our amplitude, is the distance from our horizontal axis to the magnitude, um, which is three meters, times sine of two pi. The time we picked was two, and our period that we solved for before is four seconds. Since our graph is traveling to the left, we want to use the plus sign. If our graph was traveling to the right, we use the minus sign. But since it's traveling to the left, it's plus. So plus two pi, the position we chose was two meters. So two, our wavelength is three. And then our final part is, I put a minus, but it's plus our phase constant. Our phase shift, if you wanna call it plus our phase constant phi naught, and that is what we're solving for. So, since we made y at 2, 2, we see at our graph here that's at 0, so this whole thing equals 0, making this much simpler to solve for. So if we solve for 0, we get 2 pi times 1 half, or 2 over 4, this just becomes pi plus four pi over three, four thirds pi plus r phi naught equals zero. Solving for phi naught, solving for phi naught, we subtract both of these over. Phi naught equals pi plus four thirds pi is 7 thirds pi. So we get negative 7 thirds pi. This isn't the only answer you can get for this equation. We can always shift it by 2 pi. So if we shift it back another 2 pi, another answer we could get is negative pi over 3. We can do this as many times as we want. It's always simplest to find the most simple form of this problem. So negative pi over three seems to be the easiest because then we have no multiple of two pi, but these are both acceptable answers. If we write out our entire wave equation for this problem, this is what we are looking for, but for completeness sake, let's write out the entire wave equation for this problem. So our wave equation, which is a function of position and time, equals our amplitude, which is three meters, times sine of two pi, some generic time that we won't put in, times the period, or divided by the period. The period is four seconds, plus two pi, some specific position that we won't identify, divided by the wavelength, which is three meters, minus pi over three, which is the phase constant we got, or minus seven over three pi, and so forth. So our total wave equation is here. That finishes our problem, so if this was helpful, please leave a like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.